on that phase five. Yay. String decoding. So this, this is something near and dear to my heart because I see this a lot in malware when it has either obfuscated um, embedded strings within it to make it harder to, to detect or obfuscated actual code or obfuscates the uh, network communications to make it more difficult to detect on the wire. Uh, so this, this is something I definitely see a lot with malware analysis. And the general algorithm for, you know, this looks like it's it's doing some kind of munging or, or obfuscation. The obfuscation is, it's in a loop, and at the start of the loop, you see it read from memory, grab something from memory, do something to that, and then write it back out to memory. And it can be either overwriting what it read, and that's, that's actually a really good sign that it's doing some kind of deobfuscation, um, or it could write it out to a different location. Um, yeah, single byte or multi byte operations, just be aware it could be grabbing a, a single byte, like moving it into um, AL, which is the low order byte of EAX, um, making modifications to that, move it back, or it can be grabbing two bytes and refer, you know, move it into AX, um, or it can be grabbing uh, four bytes, move the whole thing into EAX, munch it move back. Um, certain encryption algorithms will work on chunks of, what is it, eight bytes? Mm -hmm. Certain en encryption algorithms will work on chunk chunks of how many bytes? Just give me some examples. Uh, that's like the 64 bit space, so triple that to the two AES has 128 bit space, and then it has 128 bit space. Okay. So, so like eight and sixteen by chunks. Um, ASCII table was your friend. So in the you you can actually go to Google and type in ASCII table and, and it'll bring you to a, to a, a actually the first hit on there is a good um, example of an ASCII table. I've included within the uh, references folder um, of that folder on the desktop. Um, a ASCII table in there that you can reference the, uh, I'll bring that one up, reference. So the way that, that you would read this, the decimal representation, hexadecimal, octal, and then what that, that character is in terms of ASCII. Um, so like space is hex 20, decimal 32, capital A is, is hex 41, or decimal 65. So this is just one way that if you come across um, something uh, like this in, in IDA, you can go, oh, well like I know from like 41 through 5A, that's, that's the capital letters in the alphabet. Or like 61 through 7a is the lowercase letters in the alphabet. Anyway, fitness. This is another thing that obfuscation or or um, real encryption will use is some kind of. Um, masking of that, that data, uh, modification of that data. Um, it can be as simple as a single um, XOR or a simple, um, um, I've seen, you know, sub or add as a simple obfuscation technique or just to, to obfuscate, it does a add of, you know, I don't know, like 240 and to deobfuscate it does a sub of 240. And that just, there's your, essentially that's a Caesar cipher. Um, or it can be more complicated uh, and you can have combinations of, of these instructions. Um, the idea with the AND or XOR 
Um, you want to keep in mind the what is it doing the um, the munging on the, in the example here. Um, these are two ways of doing the exact same thing that we want to show you. So we'll take a look at just the, the and part first because it's the same. And the ax o f h. Can you guys tell me what's that? What that's doing? Masking the first nibble. Yeah. Masking the first nibble. What does that mean? So uh, basically, when you and zero f with anything, the first nibble goes away. The first nibble goes away. So let's say I uh, let's say I and ff with zero f. The result is zero f, right? Right. Um, if I admit, if I if I and zero f with um, anything, basically the first nibble goes to zero, and the second nibble is the identity function. Oh, okay. So you're looking at it as the first nibble, meaning the nibble on the left. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I getting the ending in this screwed up again? <laughs> Um, so if we're talking about anding on this 32-bit register um, and you just see OFH, well that's that's that means that there's there's zeros in front of that F. So it's it's actually zero 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 F. Right. So the top um, hold on. The top 28 bits of EAX will go to zero because when you and anything with zero, it's zero. And then the lower uh, four bits of EAX will just will be there because when you and um, something with with F, it just you get the same thing. It's it's essentially the what's that term? The identity. For the end operation. Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, these are two different ways of of showing the same thing. You can either say move SX byte pointer EDX, and this just says, okay, I'm going to get the byte that is. Uh, that, that that EDX points to, rather than um, if I were to just say move into EAX um, bracket, EDX bracket, it assumes that that is a 32-bit um, value that it wants to grab and put into EAX because that is a 32-bit register. What is, what is this instruction, move SX? Yes, move move with sign extend. That just means that I'm grabbing a byte here, but since I'm putting it into a 32-bit register, I'm going to say the sign bit within of that byte. I'm just going to make all of the uh, the higher order bits that same as the sign bit of the byte. The sign bit is the what is the sign bit? <laughs> I mean, which which bit of a byte is the sign bit? It's the one that indicates it, whether it's positive or negative. Right. But which one is it? The left, yeah. Yeah, the high order bit. Most significant bit, yep. That's another way of putting it. Uh, and so if it's zero, that means the the um, high order bytes of EAX are going to be zero. If it's one, the high order bytes of EAX are going to be uh, one. Um, uh, this is another way of, of doing that, basically of, of doing this. Instead of saying, hey, that's a byte pointer, I'm going to say, hey, I'm just putting it into the AL register, which is a byte. So it's 
it, it is going to know that I'm, I'm not going to grab 32 bits at that location and try to stuff them into AL. I'm just going to grab 8 bits and, and put them into AL. It's just another way of just saying I only want to grab a byte at the location point to byte EDX. <coughs> Okay, so any questions on that, on the, the identifying decoding loops or dealing with bit masking? No questions. Okay, in that case, can jump into phase five of the bomb lab. Everybody remember how to uh, bring up Ida, or rather, I should say, if you saved what you were working on yesterday, if you close down Ida, you'll have this bomb.idb, and you can just double click it, OK, and open it. It'll bring you back to where you were, and you can go from there. <coughs> 